have heard somebody say at some point in, in your life that it never hurts to ask. And even though we may consciously understand that, it can still be really hard to ask, especially if it's somebody with some prestige or it's somebody in a position that we respect and we're afraid of getting rejected. We're afraid of getting that no. We think everything rests on us hearing that yes. And if we hear no, that's going to absolutely devastate us. And it can have that effect of making us not want to ask anything in the future because we fear that no. We're so afraid of that no. Well, fear of that no is going to keep you from some of the most amazing things and the most amazing experiences that, that you can have in business and in life. We, we get so fearful of these things and it's, it's okay. That's just human nature. But the good news is we have the ability to do better. We have the ability to stare that fear and that human nature in the face and say, you know what? Today, I'm crazy enough to just say, say no to the fear of no and say yes to the prospect of yes, right? Kind of, I got three stories I'm going to tell you. One is a recent experience where I was talking to someone about this and we came up with the idea of reaching out to, to some respected brands and asking them if they would be willing to, to donate some supplies so that they can incorporate them into a YouTube video. But this individual does not have a very big YouTube channel, does not have a very big following. So we started talking about some of the unique aspects of this person that could be leveraged to the advantage of getting to a yes. And you know, the the people that they would reach out to, they, they might end up saying no anyway, but it's but you never know unless you just do it, right? So and as we're talking about this, I could see his motivation increasing and and kind of catching the vision of what could be possible. And that's such a fun moment to be in, to to just start imagining what is possible just by a simple action. So I hope he goes out and does that because you know often when when these type of opportunities come in our path so we can get some really crazy results. So I'll tell you two other stories. So the first is several years ago I I was uh experiencing some really bad carpal tunnel syndrome from using a mouse. Since I was 11 years old I'd been drawing and creating graphics and stuff on computers. And it was really wearing on me. And, and my wrist was hurting so much that I thought I was going to have to switch jobs. I just got to do something else. There's no way I could keep doing what I was doing because the pain was so bad. I would do all the stretches and, and everything I could find online to try to help. Icing it. I mean, that really didn't help. But uh, the stretches helped a little bit, but it wasn't nearly enough. So I started asking myself, how many more years can I do this for? So I started doing some research and I found out a tablet was probably the way to go. When, you, when you're using a pen, you're rotating your wrist 90 degrees and you're using different muscles. So it kind of gives those side-to-side those -side wrist muscles a big break. Anyway, I'm, I'm at Photoshop World in Las Vegas and I'm going and I'm visiting the, the Wacom booth. Wacom's the company that makes really great tablets. Um, they use the pen-able technology. They make Cintiqs, which are these amazing screens that you can draw right on almost like a giant iPad, right? And and I'm looking at one of these Cintiqs and I'd only seen these before online. And so to actually be standing in front of one using it was incredible. So I'm sitting there using the pen and I said, man, I could really get used to this. And somebody walked by and they asked me if, if I'd ever used one of these before. I said, no, this is my first time. And I'm sitting there drawing this cartoon frog, which was kind of my go-to little character that I would draw when testing things. And she said, hey, well, uh, you could play around with that as much as you want, but we'd love to interview and talk to you about your experience. So I was like, yeah, sure thing. Why not? So I went back to this, uh, this section that had you know black curtains around it and they sat me down and they said, hey, is it okay if we record this? I said, yeah, sure thing. They, they recorded me talking about my experience as a designer and what type of tools I like to use and how I felt about their technology and that I was considering using some of it. And so uh, they liked what I had to say. So they asked if they could do a photo shoot and get some pictures of me to use in some marketing and advertising. And I was like, yeah, sure. Why, why not? So they, they handed me one of the pens and they said, hey, do whatever you want with it. So 
I just kind of thought to myself, well, let's see, I could uh, use this pen and make myself look very sophisticated, you know, and and give them my best, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson look if I if I could muster something like that. But no, uh, and I, I took the pen and I stuck it between my lip and my nose like a mustache and I kind of curled my lip up and I held it up there like it was this Salvador Dali mustache made of a pen. And that's the picture they took of me. And that's the picture they put in several different magazines. So that was my big shot at modeling was, um, uh, <laughs> was looking ridiculous in a magazine. But you know what? I loved it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Wouldn't have changed the thing because <laughs> that's, that's kind of my personality. So I thought that was great. So anyway, I come home. And I purchased a tablet there at the show, by the way. Uh, I wanted the Cintiq, but you know, I got a tablet. It was cheaper. It was within my, it was within my budget. So uh, I come home. I'm using the tablet. I'm like, hey, I really like this. And then I get an email. And he said, hey, Steve, we appreciate you uh, letting us use your your photos and telling your story. And in our way of saying thank you to you, we we want to give you a free tablet of your choice. Just go pick one out. Tell us which one you want. and We'll ship it to you. So I'm thinking, hey, free stuff. All right. I am all about this, but I already have a tablet. I don't really need another one. So I write them back and I have to think about this for a minute because I'm like, okay, this is, this is bold what I'm asking here. But I write them back and I say, hey, I really appreciate it. I already have one, on one of the tablets. I bought one at the show, but if you're still in a giving mood, I would really, really like to have one of those Cintiqs. And if you send me one, I'll do a review for you. I'll send it back to you. And, and I think that could be a value to you as well. So I send off that email just thinking that they're going to write back and laugh saying, uh, you know, that's a, that's a $2,500 piece of equipment, sir. We, we were offering you a free, uh, you know, couple hundred dollar piece of equipment. But no, they wrote back and they said, sure, give us your address and we'll send you one. So I'm sitting there, I'm cheering. I am celebrating. I'm dancing around my office and I, I can't believe it. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what if, what if I didn't ask? What if I just accepted another tablet because I was afraid to ask? And But hey, here I was. I, I did the crazy thing. And I got a crazy result. So sure enough, they shipped it to my house. I had that thing for years and years. I love that thing. And uh, I did write them a great review. Uh, I was, I spread the word about it. I got several other people to buy those. So it was, it ended up being a good deal for them, I think. And it was a great deal for me. And it taught me, hey, you know, you never, ever, ever be afraid to ask. Just ask it and see what happens. And so. All right, last story. My daughter, she's been really interested in doing animation, animatics, uh, storyboarding, things like that. And I've taught her some things. I've, I've have a little bit of background in in doing some independent animation. But she was interested in in working for some industries, and uh, I I saw one that I thought might be right up her alley. And I said, they're producing some new animation and maybe they're looking for someone like you one day. Who knows? So I said, why don't you, why don't you write their, um, their team and see if there's someone you could talk to who'd be willing to tell you the types of things that you would need to know, the types of things that you would need to do, maybe if there's a, a college degree that they recommend or, or some type of education that they require that you know you could ask them and and see if they'll tell you what you might need to do to come work for them one day. She went ahead and and thought about that for a little bit, thought it was a good idea, and I would ask her every couple of days, "Hey, have you reached out to them?" and she goes, "No, I haven't yet." And and so finally one day, uh, I hear her kind of exclaim, "Hey, I I heard back from them." I said, "Oh, what did they say?" They said, "Well, they referred me to this other guy." And uh so I emailed him and and asked him if he could help me out. So anyway, what had ended up happening is this guy, he writes my daughter back and, and he says, you know what? I'm going to help you out. A lot, of, a lot of where I am today is other people 
reaching out and helping me to to get where I am. So I kind of want to pay it forward. We just watched that movie with the kids, Pay It Forward, not too long ago, and they loved it. It's really sad, but it's got a great, great message. And so he goes, uh, he's going to pay it forward and help her out and do this four week training with her where they'll meet every Friday. So four Fridays, he's going to do a Zoom call and he's going to give her some instructions, uh, some assignments of different things to do. She's going to do those things. And then he'll kind of grade her on that and tell her what she could do to improve and then give her some tips and pointers about what she could do moving forward. And, you know, I was, I was really blown away by the generosity of this guy. And, and I can think back into my own life and my own career as to how often people were willing to share information with me and how often I was willing to also share information and knowledge as well. Especially I think in the creative industry, there's just something about people willing to share and help other people out because it it ends up just helping out the whole industry as a whole whenever you offer to to lift someone and, and help them kind of, and even if it's a small way, achieve their dreams. But if she never asked that question, she would have never got that response. And she got a response back that was way more than she could have expected. And, and to me, just as a father, that was such a valuable thing to see my kid be able to experience. And man, hats off to that guy who, who reached out and, and decided to take some time to just help some random kid that he didn't even know. And man, if you find yourself in a position to do something like that for somebody, take it because you can change people's lives with just a little tiny fraction of your time. It, it's amazing how little it can take. But on the flip side of that, again, I mean, the whole point of this podcast is never be afraid to ask. Go out and ask. And you're going to get no after no after no. That may be a reality. But you could get yes after yes after yes. And it could be a mix of, of those different responses. But I got to tell you, every yes you get is worth all of those no's easily. Easily. So don't be afraid of those no's. Seek after those yeses and realize that the, the path to a yes is often paved with many, many no's. And every no is one step closer to a yes. And keep trying and, and don't get discouraged. Even if it's a thousand no's in a row, there's a yes out there for you. Go and find it. That's the message for this episode. So, hey, take it easy and keep creating out there.